a very good morning distinguished personalities on the desk of the desk my respected seniors friends my dear students of anand agriculture universities and guests from shri n patel postgraduate institute of science and research sp university anand ladies and gentlemen welcome to the late dr divakar r patel 14th memorial lecture organized by ba college of agriculture alumni association today's speaker the esteemed dr a k shasani director icar national institute of plant biotechnology new delhi will be elaborating on biotechnological interventions for nutritional securities it's a kind request to all the personalities on the desk to join in kindling the lamp and inaugurate today's program please much thanks to all of you sir let us begin our program with a prayer please request dr y m shukla respected principal and dean ba college of agriculture anand agriculture university and president ba college of agriculture alumni association to place the welcome remarks please sir a very good morning to one and all dignitaries sitting on the dais dr k b kathiria sir 
Honorable Vice Chancellor of Anand Agricultural University, Dr. A.K. A. Sasani, Director NIPB ICR, Dr. M.K. Jala, Director of Research and Dean PG Study, Dr. K.C. Patel, Secretary of BSCA Alumni Association, <coughs> Dr. H.B. Patel, Director of Extension Education, University Officers, Principals and Deans, as well as executive members of BSA Alumni Association, retired professors who have gathered here, and dear students. <coughs> First of all, I would like to invite our uh, president of today's function, Dr. K.B. Kathiria, sir, who is an eminent uh, plant breeder, renowned scientist, and <coughs> eminent scholar, ardent academician, and uh, co has contributed a lot and immensely in the number of variety released by AAU, despite, uh, by AAU. Despite of ever busy schedule, Sir has spared always his valuable time to grace the various occasions uh, here. So, I am very much delightful and I warmly welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. K.B. Kathiria sir as a president of today's uh, lecture, Dr. De uh, lecture on uh, Dr. Divakar Patel. As we all know that India has become a self-reliant in cereal production and efforts are also going on to enhance the production of pulses, legumes and oil seeds as well as we are also emphasizing on natural farming and organic farming cultivation also. Besides this, the, there is a need to develop and concentrate on the nutritional aspect of the various uh, production. And for that, because it will uh, increase the health and wealth and the happiness for the all citizens and the living organisms of our country. I am very much delighted to welcome uh, our chief guest, Dr. A.K. Sasani, Director, ICR, NIPB, New Delhi, for his gracious present here. <coughs> we bid warm welcome to you, sir, as the chief guest of today's uh, memorial lecture. Apart from this, Anand Agriculture University has contributed a lot and immensely in the number of uh, recommendations to the farmers number of variety released for the farmers and the number of technologies have been also developed and for this the various director of research have contributed a lot ever since the establishment of Anand Agriculture Univers Agricultural University since 2004. So I am delighted and I feel highly proud and privileged to our research leader Dr. M.K. Jala as a guest of honor here. Anand Agriculture University and uh, BA College of Agriculture, uh, BA College of Agriculture. They have an uh, alumni association and more than 10,000 graduates have been passed from here. Total number of this is uh, even more and 3,000 registered members are also here for the alumni association. And uh, this alumni association is performing the number of research activities that are uh, medals to the students, they are encouraging the students, apart from this uh, best teacher award and many more awards for the uh, students. So here the, the and beside this, the, they are also helping the economically poor students also. So various uh, constructive activities are being performed by this uh, BSA Alumni Association. So I bid my wife welcome to the secretary, Dr. Keshi Patel for his uh, uh, efforts for this, uh, since uh, 1993, this uh, BSA Alumni Association was established and it was registered. So for the last uh, almost uh, 30 years that we can say that uh, these efforts are going on and students are mostly benefited. So I am very much uh, delighted to welcome uh, Dr. K.C. Patel here. Apart from this notable example of this BSA Aluminum, uh, Alumni Association is that uh, our VAU uh, this alumni, they are helping us in the government sectors, non-government sectors, as well as uh, as a academicians. Dr. Bimal Patel was our alumnus and 
Dr. J. B. Patel is another alumnus who is presently a vice chancellor in Gujarat, uh, different university of Gujarat. So this alumni association has produced a BA College of Agriculture has produced a number of this uh, personality and they are serving the nation a lot. Apart from this, uh, I bid my warm welcome to all the dignitaries present of the dais. They are ex-professors and research scientists, Dr. G.C. Jadaja sir, Dr. Dalal sahab, Dr. B.K. Patel, Dr. A.M. Patel, Dr. Walala sir, Dr. A.D. Patel, Dr. Kher and many more. So I bid my welcome that their august presence is here and uh, I am highly delighted to welcome you all sir. I am highly delighted to welcome all university officers who are present here and the principals and deans of the various faculties who are present here. My HODs of BA College of Agriculture and HODs of the other faculties, they are also present here. So I bid my welcome to them also. Apart from this, all the unit heads, those who are present here, uh, my genuine welcome to them also. And Dear students, for uh, you this uh, program has been arranged and uh, we are going to interact with the speaker and uh, our learner speaker and uh, you will achieve a more knowledge because this program is uh, with aim that uh, it is knowledge sharing program and I hope this program will be very much, uh, lecture will be very much uh, informative, inter interactive and interesting to share the knowledge and and to plan our future research plan. So uh, I welcome you once again, all of you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you, sir, for the nice welcome address. Sir, I request you to offer a flower bouquet and welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor, Anand Agriculture University and President of the session, Dr. K.B. Gathiria. So I request you to please welcome our respected speaker, Dr. A.K. Sashani. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. K.C. Patel, research scientist and unit head, Micronutrient Project, Anand Agriculture University and Secretary, Baka Alumni Association to florally welcome respected director of research, Anand Agriculture University and guest of honor, Dr. M. Kishala. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. R.G. Parmar, Professor and Head, Department of Plant Pathology, BA College of Agriculture, to welcome Dr. Y.M. Shukla with a flower bouquet. Please, sir. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. D.J. Parmar, Associate Professor, Department of Agriculture Statistics, BA College of Agriculture, to welcome Dr. K.C. Patel with a flower bouquet. Please. Thank you, sir. I now kindly request Dr. Jigar Mistri, Assistant Professor, Department of Genetics and Plant Breeding, BA College of Agriculture, to introduce the audience with the persona and achievements of late Dr. Divakar R. Patel. Please. Good morning to one and all. So this lecture is instituted to perpetuate the memory of Dr. Divakar Ratilal Patel, one of the distinguished scientists of this university. He was born on September 10, 1957. Being a son of soil, preferred to make a career in agriculture and opted for B.Sc. Agriculture from this <coughs> college, B.A. College of Agriculture. So he graduated in 1977 and uh, got his master's degree in 1979 and PhD in 1985 with uh, specialization in plant breeding and genetics. He received meritorious scholarships, uh, that is ICR merit scholarship, uh, junior research fellowship, senior research fellowship, and uh, after completion of his PhD, he joined as an <coughs> assistant professor at uh, Sardar Krushinagar Datiwada Agriculture University and later he was shifted to Anand where he progressed to associate professor and professor. So during his uh, master's uh, study, he published his work on uh, Isab Gul in a prestigi prestigious journal like Crop Science. He was recipient of uh, research um, uh, assistantship 
of rupees 400 per month out of privately financed scheme sponsored by Isabul Manufacturers and Exporters Association. During him, uh, his master's program only, he was uh, introduced to the tissue culture work since the first tissue culture lab of the then Gujarat Agriculture University was initiated in the medicinal plants uh, ICR a project during 1977. In the year 1999, Dr. Divakar was honored with uh, Sahakar Krishi Gaurav Award for outstanding contribution in the field of plant tissue culture in Gujarat from Gujarat State Cooperative Bank, Ahmedabad. And in, in the year nine, uh, 2005, he received prestigious Dr. Vikram Sarabhai Award 2005 as scientist of the year uh, for the year 2002-2003 in the field of biotechnology from Gujarat Council of Science and Technology Government of Gujarat. Dr. Divakar excelled in the field of research for more than 25 years and his major areas of focus had been field breeding and tissue culture. In field <coughs> breeding, he developed a new method for maintenance and multiplication of female parental lines of in castor leading to reduced incidence of early sex reversal in hybrid seed production program and in reduced roguing efforts. He was associated in the development, identification and evaluation of a popular castor variety, Gujarat Castor II. He also in, was involved in the development and standardization of crossing technique in Onla and Jetropha. So collection and establishment and evaluation of germplasm in Onla and Jetropha and then floral biology studies in, and crossing technique uh, was developed by him. In tissue culture, Dr. Divakar was associated in the development of tissue culture protocol for mass multiplication in date palms, spine gourd, parva, rose, potato, banana, soap nut, and many. Development of regeneration protocol in tomato, okra, chili, and cumin. Dr. Divakar successfully completed five research projects in the aforesaid uh, thirst areas and had seven ongoing uh, projects funded by CSIR, DBT, Ministry of Agriculture, National Oil Seeds Development Board, and state government. He had published 12 <coughs> research papers, 25 popular articles, and five manuals and technical reports. He has successfully guided 12 MSc and two PhD students. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the nice introduction. I request Dr. K.C. Patel, Secretary, BA College of Agriculture Alumni Association, to announce the name of the awardees for their various academic achievements. Please, sir. Good morning, everybody. Baka Alumni Association, every year offering 23 awards, cash prize, scholarship, medals. Among these, some uh, awards today I am here declared. Uh, Dr. R.M. Patel Scholarship, uh, the scholarship for MSc students. Uh, those students uh, that merit in first rank in the uh, entrance test and admitted in PA uh, College of Agriculture. So the, this scholarship goes to Patel Kinal Ben Mukesh Bhai. I request uh, uh, his, uh, her guide, Arna Madam, to receive the check. This is the uh, last installment. Altogether, 22,000. Uh, uh, we have uh, 17,000 already we have given to our kennel ban. Now, remaining 4,250 4, today uh, we are offering and we are giving to uh, kennel ban. I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to uh, give the, uh, this check to Arna Madam. The PG Research Award, uh, Mukundbhai Varadbhai Patel Best Master Degree Research Award goes to Changela Priyanka Subhashbhai, Priyanka Changela, and guide Dr. Ganga Devi, also welcome. 
So this master degree research ever in social, agriculture economics, social science group. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Jala, sir, I request you for faculty award. The, the faculty award for respective year, not for the whole year. The, the first year, Dr. Pooja Pandey, best uh, teacher award. So, Varad Bhai Ambadas Patel, UG teacher award for first year. Pooja Pandey. For second year, Dr. R.G. Parman, Associate Professor in Authority, Department of Plant Pathology. Uh, and for third year, Dr. Hiran. Kundan Bhai Patel, Assistant Professor, Department of Agriculture Microbiology. Just for information, uh, today in audience, uh, our Rave students, 142 students, then uh, 160 students from uh, Sri Alpes and Patel Postgraduate Institute of Science and Research, retired faculty members and our faculty members also, all are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the nice presentation and congratulations to all the awardees and best wishes for their all future endeavors. Moving on, may I request Dr. M. K. Jala, respected director of research, Anand Agriculture University, to address the house. Please, sir. Sarvenemara Vandan, a very good morning to all. Honorable Vice Chancellor of this university and President of the function, respected Dr. Kadhiriya sir, a special invited guest, Dr. A.K. Shasani, Director NIPB, New Delhi. Thank you very much, sir, for coming here and for accepting our invitation for this uh, special occasion. Dean of the Faculty, Dr. Shukla, Secretary of this association, Dr. K.C. Patel. Amongst the audience, uh, very respected ex-Vice Chancellor, Dr. Sheikh Sir, and a galaxy of our uh, retired uh, uh, faculty and uh, staff, to name a few, very respected uh, Dr. Uh, Dalal Sir, Dr. Jadeja Sir, Dr. B.K. Patel Sir, Dr. A.M. Patel sir, Dr. Balala sir, Dr. R.C. Jala sir and other uh, very respected uh, retired faculty and alumni of this college, faculty, scientists and uh, students and I have been told that uh, apart from the students of our own university, uh, students from Dr. A.N. Patel College or PG Institute from CVM, they are also there in very large numbers and uh, science is about uh, crossing the boundaries as we know so we all welcome the students from our neighboring institute uh, as well and for the students if i can say uh, the ignited minds or rather to be ignited minds i think after this uh, uh, lecture uh, any memorial lecture uh, is uh, something special for any academic institution, especially when research is a very big component in the uh, uh, routine or a special activities of this university. 
and uh, that memorial lecture is in the memory of somebody who has been very special or who had been very special and uh, the memorial lecture uh, organization is actually an event uh, not only to celebrate his legacy or his intellectual power or his contribution to the university but they at the same time such type of occasion is also uh, to uh, rededicate ourselves, rejuvenate ourselves through the spirit and the efforts which uh, were shown by those uh, great uh, persons or personalities in this case Dr. late Dr. Divakar Patel as we know uh, that uh, a scientist uh, of par excellence as has been uh, narrated earlier uh, through his uh, resume. Uh, very pioneering work at this university uh, was done by him and many of the fruits which we today we are uh, you know um, uh, enjoying are uh, the some of the fundamental research and uh, even through some funda infrastructural facilities in which he was so instrumental uh, uh, that we are enjoying today so i bow my head in uh, memory of dr divakar patel at the outset as far as this lecture itself is concerned and the topic biotechnological interventions for nutritional security see always we talk about uh, two aspects one is the food security or food insecurity and then nutritional security there is some difference as we know and despite a significant growth in uh, food production globally over the past half century one of the most important challenging face, uh, uh, challenges facing society today is how to feed an expected population of some 9 billion by the year 2050. It has been estimated that we need to produce around 70 to 100 percent more food in light of the growing impact of climate change and concerns over energy security and this has been endorsed by FAO. Today the world produces sufficient food to feed its population but there remains more than 1 billion people who suffer from food insecurity and malnutrition. This challenge is amplified further by increased purchasing power and dietary shifts in many parts of the globe, barriers to food access and distribution particularly in uh, poor regions. Despite the emergence of many innovations and technological advances in recent decades, this combination of drivers poses novel and complex challenges for global agriculture, which is under pressure to ensure nutritional security in ways that are environmentally and socially sustainable. I was going through one uh, article published in an international journal, International Journal of Agricultural Sustainability and that article was published few years back and the title was the top hundred questions of importance to the future of global agriculture and, uh, and there were 53 authors in this article and they had uh, very you can say meticulously planned these hundred questions for the next century. And, and, and through various domains, maybe it's a natural resource management or agronomical practices or pest and disease management or animal husbandry or fish fisheries. Uh, so all those pertinent questions which we all will address in the next century. And as far as this topic is concerned, there were five questions um, uh, they had put uh, out of the hundred, five questions were for these aspect. And one of the question I remember that uh, although uh, we are almost say food secure as they say number wise but this nutritional insecurity is going to be a very very uh, big problem in the coming future because of many things uh, associated with that one of the thing which i would like to highlight here that uh, when we talk about nutritional security over the past decades interestingly food is divided into two major sections, as i understand uh, and this is generally pertinent to the young generation present here. One is food at home and second food away from home. 
and this is concerning which our food habits nowadays which we are slowly adopting if you will uh, agree with this because most of the times i could i would say we are eating the food which is prepared away from home because conventionally it was only our own kitchen which was the source of our own food and we were knowing the nutritional ingredients which are present and generally we had a balanced diet in that sense but now it is the zomatos and swiggies and all other uh, you know and, and other giants including the amazons and flick carts and now my basket and nature baskets and dot com and all you know they are emerging and uh, that is uh, really penetrating into the psyche of our own feeding habits and uh, we generally do not know the nutritional scenario present in that and we eat that so with significant domestic markets global majors if i can say the global companies want to swim emerging markets and also decide our own food ha food habits uh, i can again highlight here that at present there is a coexistence of four generations you all know the young generation you know there are people like us who are called as boomers you know who are uh, born between 1945 to 1965 we are called as boomers and then there are generation x gen x the you call it then zen y and then zen gen z gen z later than the millennium year 20 2000 and they say one of the estimates says that by 2050 there will be 2.5 times increase in the persons aging more than 60 years and uh, there will be four times increase in the persons aging more than 80 by 2050 and the international food companies they know those these data and their business channels and food supply uh, management they have already started working on that uh so the focus of food ventures in emerging with the next generation of consumers and one interesting figure which i got uh, one of the estimate uh, very authentic estimates from us is that by 2030 millennials means those who were born in 20 uh, 2000 or after they will hold five times more much wealth than what at present they are today five times more wealth will be only with those who are born in 2000 or after that just around you guys said 20 30, 30 years of age imagine so if their own food habits will be like that they will also venture into the companies and business according to their beliefs so the point is the uh, the recent pandemic also has changed uh, human perception of value of health and time quest for well being triggered by the pandemic is paramount for consumers and as we know food is a key contributor to consumers perception of good health as per the survey done in 2020 very recently 43% of the consumer they rate depression and mental health as currently having a moderate or severe impact on their everyday life so with this data when we are talking about this such an important uh, uh, topic on which of course the uh, it will be highlighted by the learned speaker the four key areas of focus that has attracted more than 10 billion dollars in research in the last year these four domains are one for gene editing second the research on microbiome third alternate proteins and fourth the agri agricultural technological application including the uh, ict tools one of the domain very interestingly is of alternate proteins alternate proteins means alternative to for example animal derived food meat without animals dairy without cattle eggs without chicken these are all called as a disruptive technologies you you all know they have started preparing meat in the laboratory and milk in the laboratory so can you imagine what will be the agricultural scenario maybe after 20 30 years and they are seriously claiming that by 20 30 these products will be available on this planet earth so whatever ecosystem we have generated and established of all these hundreds of years imagine what 
disruption it will cause and that's why these are called as disruption technologies one more interesting thing i would like to share it here uh, share here is there is an increasing growing no no in food no no means no no rejection of food or liking and disliking of the food on the labels if you see in many of the products especially in the developed countries and developing countries on the labels what you will find gmo free lactose free sugar free or uh, natural sugar organic only caffeine free local farm produce non refrigerated peanut free gluten free these are all the additional labels which we have started getting and accordingly these we have to think about these uh, nutritional security because there are there are going to be divisions and subdivisions among the consumers maybe preference wise liking or disliking wise or even health wise uh, whatever their uh, preferences uh, may drive the their own nutritional uh, security demand for food and feed will increase by 70% by mid century there will be additional 2 billion people by 2050 that is a rise of about 34% and uh, in 2050 70% of the world population will be urban population so these are all the very important statistics uh, with which we have to discuss this very important topic and finally i would just like to emphasize uh, which i have also experienced in my my recent visit abroad there are very serious concerns about a few international giant companies food chain companies who may gain control of the global food system i don't want to name them you know there are four five companies even seed companies for that example you know international giants they are having 70 to 80% of market share so whatever products they would like to have in the market accordingly they will create a need amongst the population and they have got fantastic marketing strategy for that advertisement and imports and incentives and first so a particular pocket in the world maybe in africa the person may not need a, a fancy kind of food he need a basic protein fiber carbohydrate and other things but they will try to create that demand first because they have to sell their products so there is a very serious international debate going on at the international flora for forum and that's why now they say this is the time to have a real bridge between the private players and the public players because see most of the time they say public sectors like us mainly are concerned with the basic research and some application point but ultimately when product selling comes it is only the private players and there is some gap especially in the country like india which we need to strengthen uh, strengthen for uh, getting this uh, answer uh, to this problem of uh, nutritional security so uh, ladies and gentlemen we have to make all these attempts to address this problem of nu nutritional insecurity and one such attempt is to accelerate the scientific endeavor in this area uh, is today's lecture by a very learned scientist i am sure the next hour will witness scientific knowledge sparkles tintillating our intellectual capacity making us more wiser for the benefit of science and scientific application looking forward for the same thank you very much thank you sir for your very informative and encouraging words as always uh, this is to inform the audience that mrs pragna ben patel and family uh, have joined online from usa uh, on behalf of ba college of agriculture alumni association i welcome you ma'am we now would very much like to hear from our honorable vice chancellor dr kb kathiria sir please good morning to everyone on dais particularly dr sasne director of uh, national institute of for plant uh, biotechnology 
डॉक्टर एम के झाला डायरेक्टर ऑफ रिसर्च एंड डीन पी जी स्टडी डॉक्टर शुक्ला डॉक्टर के सी पटेल एंड पर्टिकुलरली ऑफ द डायस इन द हाउस गैलेक्सी ऑफ अवर एक्स इज डिग्नेटरीज आर सीटिंग पर्टिकुलरली डॉक्टर शेख साहब डॉक्टर दलाल साहब डॉक्टर जाडेजा साहब डॉक्टर बी के पटेल डॉक्टर अशोक भाई डॉक्टर बालाला साहब एंड ऑल अदर दीज रिटायर्ड प्रोफेशन एंड हेड्स अवर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफिसर्स फैकल्टीज एंड फॉर दी फॉर होम दिस मेमोरियल लेक्चर इज यूजफुल इज दी स्टूडेंट फ्रेंड्स आई थिंक लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स हैव बीन टॉक्ट by dr jala particularly he has narrated uh, all the information about uh, the topic uh, today is delivered by dr sasne particularly i would like to say that in the memory of uh, dr divakar bhai this is the 14th uh, lecture series and uh, today the very important uh, topic is uh, selected that is the biotechnological interventions for nutritional security so the memory of uh, dr divakar bhai we know and dr jigar mistri has also given some information about uh, the contribution of uh, dr divakar bhai and uh, whatever uh, uh, the tissue culture laboratory and other things which was established at that time by him and uh, how we are carry forwarding the work uh, and particularly this uh, date palm this protocol so at national and internationally we know very well that uh, this is the appropriate of our anand agriculture university and uh, the major contribution was from dr divakar bhai and uh, uh, later on also that laboratory strengthen and uh, lot of uh, work uh, is carried out and uh, the, the protocols of different crops have been generated and even we are going ahead uh, to uh, develop the novel uh, these uh, protocols uh, particularly on the uh, coconut even oil palm uh, just uh, we are going to complete that work also within uh, i think one or two years so uh, uh, in the memory of uh, dr divakar bhai uh, here uh, particularly he was also what we can say the uh, very close to me i can say because uh, from uh, the we, we are also from the same base he has passed out from here and i passed my i have passed out from the junagadh agriculture university so and we were also work to, uh, together so i know him personally at the time so here uh, today particularly whatever topic is selected i already narrated that uh, this uh, dr jala has already told uh, this uh, food security nutritional security and how uh, we can uh, achieve that uh, goals that we know very well that at present uh, what is the food uh, production and uh, what is the need of uh, foods uh, uh, at the end of 2050 uh, uh, so uh, looking to the population growth rate and uh, the requirement of the food and food is uh, one side and the another is uh, the nutritional security so particularly the biotechnological these interventions how it can be useful for the nutritional security is the most important uh, this aspect because uh, we know very well that recently our honorable uh, pm modi sahab has also released some of the varieties of uh, a uh, national level that is the bio fortified variety you all my, you might be knowing all that uh, large number of uh, these uh, bio fortified varieties have been released but how we can go ahead uh, again for uh, more uh, these uh, nutrient uh, uh, rich varieties developed to be developed by biotechnological intervention is the most important part and i think uh, in uh, and the the topic of dr sasne will also i think he will also cover some of the aspects of that thing also second important thing is that uh, this climate uh, resilient uh, variety so this is the most uh, important uh, uh, issue nowadays because we know very well that uh, uh, 
uh, in this season particularly during the monsoon and even currently we are seeing that how this flood is uh, uh, damaging to the different uh, states and not only states but we can say the crops and other things. This is one side not in our country but uh, in so many countries the same situation is going on and we are seeing the news and uh, uh, in one side this is the flood situation, in other side uh, in European countries, today I was uh, reading in Times of India that uh, in European countries uh, since last 500 years they, there, is the, there is a, in some of the parts there is a drought, severe drought condition is there and it has created a lot of problems in that area particularly. How they can mitigate uh, that is a great problem for the food, water and other things, even, even, even electricity there is a great problem. So looking to these uh, all things, how these uh, biotechnological uh, uh, these research can, uh, what we can say, help for such type of this area is most important. So in case of uh, biotechnological, uh, uh, these uh, crops if we can talk, then we know very well that uh, how much area under the biotechnology crop uh, increased uh, since last uh, 20 years. That we know very well. But here even uh, again, if you can see the, uh, the uh, uh, Indian scenario particularly, biotechnological, because the main this uh, focus uh, remained uh, through biotechnology is the GMO, development of the GMO crops. So in our uh, country also a lot of uh, these uh, number of uh, these institutes uh, uh, have worked either in the public sector or private sector and they have developed uh, number of uh, these uh, GMO, uh, these what we can say crops, varieties, but there is a lot of difficulty to release this kind of uh, these uh, uh, varieties, even uh, what we can say very good uh, these uh, uh, varieties are available even though there are so many problems to release this kind of GMO in the country. Now, looking to the, this problem particularly, the Indian government uh, has, what we can say, given some permission for genome editing these uh, uh, related these issues, particularly in March 2022, uh, the government of India and particular environment department has given permission from what we can say relaxation for the biosafety issues uh, for the G what we can say these uh, uh, the product developed through these uh, genome editing and uh, i think this, this is this is the great uh, decision from the indian government and i think it will help to develop uh, some of the products through genome editing uh, otherwise uh, uh, up to now it was uh, just considered as uh, either it is gmo or non gmo that, that, that was in a dilemma, but now the clear cut uh, these guidelines is uh, given by the government of India that now whatever these type of products will be developed, it is not, uh, it is non-GMO. So th this will definitely help to what we can say uh, start uh, uh, the research work in different laboratories or different what we can say institutes so that uh, we can uh, do better work for genome editing so that uh, uh, large number of uh, traits can be dealt uh, by genome editing. That, that, that is sure. And uh, one of these uh, aspect of nutrition, nutrition security, particularly how we can enhance these nutrition content of uh, the different uh, varieties in different crops. That is, that is the most important part and uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, genome editing or gene editing may help a great extent to develop such kind of varieties to meet the requirement of uh, this uh, nutrition security. So this is the uh, most uh, important uh, part and uh, uh, not only that but even for uh, this uh, climate resident variety we know very well drought tolerant, salt tolerant or we can say these uh, flood uh, even uh, tolerant uh, varieties are required nowadays. So for that also uh, I think uh, these uh, biotechnological tools particularly this genome editing may help a great extent uh, 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 to develop such kind of variety. So I don't want to take much time and uh, I, we will t definitely take uh, great advantage of uh, uh, our today's uh, speaker, Dr. Sasne, because he is a learned uh, scientist and uh, renowned scientist at national level. Definitely, uh, uh, not only our students, but as Dr. Jala told that a large number of students are also attending these, uh, what we can say, these uh, events from uh, 
uh, Vidyanagar, these various faculties. So I also welcome them because uh, they will also get the benefits. Last, uh, the family of uh, Dr. Deva Karbhai uh, has also joined online, so I welcome them also and uh, thank you to joining uh, this uh, event. So thank you to all and again I am sure that uh, whatever information you will get, you get some ideas and uh, definitely you will implement it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind and explanatory remarks. I request Dr. Sushil Kumar, Assistant Research Scientist, Department of Agricultural Biotechnology, Anand Agriculture University, to introduce our respected speaker, Dr. A.K. Shasani. Please. Namaskar. Good, uh, good morning. Uh, it's a privilege for me to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Ajit Kumar Shasani. Uh, currently, he is Director NIPB. Uh, Institute of ICR. He joined uh, in February uh, 2021. Uh, sir, uh, born in uh, Orissa in Sambalpur district. He completed his BSc in 1988 from Odisha Agricultural University, MSc from AAU Jorat, and PhD from IRI in 1996. After completing his PhD, sir joined as a ARS scientist in 96. And I think after completing one year, he shifted to CSIR in CMAP Institute as a scientist B. There, sir, progressed from scientist to uh, chief scientist, and later on he joined NIPB last year. Uh, sir, has, uh, sir was convener of uh, Regional Center for Science and Technology Transfer, sponsored by Indian Ocean Rim Association, uh, CSIRC map. Uh, sir, has published almost uh, 140 research paper, of which 98 are. Uh, from international journals like plant cells, uh, new phytologists which are having very high impact factor, sir, is having more than 5,000 citations with H index of 38. The cumulative impact factor of Dr. Sasani's research paper is more than 250. Sir has granted more than 100 patents of which 51 is from US, 16 from India, 34 from other countries. Currently two patents are under process. Sir has not only published research paper but also served the farmer community as he has developed 45 varieties from medicinal air and aromatic plants. Sir has guided nearly 20 students of PhD. He, has, he was involved in the 30 projects from uh, uh, which led 16 projects as a PI and co-PI. Sir major research work is plant diversity, metabolic engineering of medicinal and aromatic plants. Uh, novel genes from uh, 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 phenylpropanoid terpenoid pathway for aroma in medicinal ar aromatic plants, plant immunity for crop production. The first genome and transcriptome of uh, any of the medicinal plant from India is in the name of Dr. Shashani. Sir, is awarded n number of uh, uh, recognition and awards. He is fellow National Academy of Science, Allahabad, since 2018. Fellow National Academy of Agricultural Science from 2017, Samantra uh, Chandra Sekhara Award 2012, Odisha Vigyan Academy, Government of Odisha, CSIR Technology Prize for Biological Science 1999, CSIR Technology Award 2018, Professor Umma Kansina Memorial Award, Indian Science Congress Association 2003 for Genome Analysis and IPR Protection. Recognition for Indian Drug Manufacturer Association for Best Patent 2004, member of the team. SOM Award for Developing High Yielding Mentha Varieties by Essential Oil Association of India 2005. Recognition for FIKI Award 2005 for Rural Development to CSIR CMAP. He was a team member of that. Recognition for Nina Saxena Technology Award by IIT Khadakpur 2007. Uh, the there is still long awards are there, but this is a brief uh, by data of sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for nicely introducing Dr. Sashani. Now it's time for the speech we are all waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. A.K. Sashani for his speech on biotechnological interventions for nutritional securities. <laughs> sir, we welcome you with our kindest regard. Please. Can you have it? Color mic. Right. Right. Color mic. Color mic. Okay. No problem. 
This is to inform the audience that our Honorable Vice Chancellor and respected dear of, Director of Research uh, will leave for other important engagements. Uh, very good morning to everyone. And, and it is really nice to be in the land of Anand and with, uh, in the land of Gujarat, the pious land where Amul started and in the university which Sardar Ballabhai Patel started. So it is wonderful to be here and I feel proud of myself. And initially I will bow my head for Professor Divakar Patel for whom I am here. Probably he has invited me. And uh, really it is uh, a feel good factor. I am not a speaker. You have invited me as a speaker. I am a professor. I profess. And also I thank the organizers uh, for inviting me, specifically the Vice Chancellor and all other people like uh, Susil and uh, other. So let me address uh, Professor, uh, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Dr. K. B. Kataria, the Director of Research and Dean, Dr. M. K. Jhala, Dr. Y. M. Sukla, Dr. G. B. Patil, and all others. I am seeing a lot of seniors here. I take their blessings and always they are the source of learning and the students. They are vibrant faces of the students. And you are looking good. Some of you are you are working with your mobile phone. That is also looking good. Always it will be with your mobile phone. And another thing is that I am a native speaker of Odia. And what I think, I dream and uh, imagine in Odia convert that to Hindi and then translate to English. So there will be a time lag between my speaking and your understanding. So I will beg pardon for that. But what I will do today is I uh, will speak straight away, I will come to the science aspect because there are many things related to nutritional security. It is a huge subject. It is a huge subject. And many forum, all the forum, people talk about, we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll be increasing the nutritional security, and there are public, uh, there are four angle to it, like public, uh, farmers, industry, uh, academia, uh, and uh, so many things. So they are all known, and we know the data also. We know the data that India is now uh, self-sufficient in food production. So whether, uh, whether we will go for higher food production or higher nutritional security and what nutritional security means. We all talk about nutritional security. Should I have 100% nutritional security whatever I want and live for 2000 years? Or I will have a good healthy lifestyle for 100 years without being aging. So these are the things which matter. So when, when uh, uh, students, again I am requesting you, if you want to sleep, get bored, then sleep opening your eyes. Okay, next slide please. So these are all the data. The data says the net soil area. It is same what was before uh, 75 years or 70 years ago during the time of Green Revolution. So the net zone area is same. But our productivity has gone up. Fruit and vegetables, we have milk production, forget about the milk production, we have concentrated on the food grain production, spices production, sugar cane production, oil seed production, cotton production. What does it mean? Our productivity has gone high. But not that high that will be in comp will be comparable to the other countries. But in many cases we are fast 
or a second in the scenario. So we have worked hard, the earlier scientists, the seniors uh, here, they may not be knowing their contribution, but indirectly or directly they have contributed to make India number one in many uh, productivity scenario. So uh, that's a learning point. Next slide, please. So this is what 8-9% of the world population lives in hunger. We know that. Still, we have high productivity, high production, but due to our own, uh, I will not go into the causes, but still we have 8.5% 8, 8 uh, of the world population lives in hunger. So there is a fight between whether we will go for food security, whether we will go for nutritional security, whether we will go for both. Next. This slide says, to meet the food security need of 2050, food production must increase by 70%. So where we are, we are happy, we are exporting, but Indian population is increasing. So the rate it is increasing, we need a 70% higher, uh, not only in India, in all over the world, 70% higher food production. How we can do that? Next. So in climate change, this is the uh, already, uh, my senior, he has already talked about the climate change, climate resilience crop. Dr. Jhala has also told about that. And our director general, he is a great, uh, uh, means uh, he has done research in climate change, and he always speak about climate change. So what happening? Decrease arability, arable lands are decreasing. There is effect on fisheries, reduce yield, planting and harvesting changes. Uh, we have to change, modify, according to the climate, we have to modify the planting and harvesting schedules. Accordingly, we require different type of crops. So that's what actually everybody says that who will implement it? We people will be implementing it. We are the institutes and the agricultural universities will be implemented. Very big people, they will speak many big, big things. Nutritional security will be there, food productivity will be higher and everything will be there. And in the lab, in the field, who will be going? We people. So planting and harvesting changes will be there. There will be flood risk, high water condition, increased irrigations. We require higher irrigations. So high water is there, water is scarce. So where from we will be getting all this? So these are the scenario in the background. Next. So climate change is affecting, I'm just building up. I'm just building up to my original points. So every slide has a message. So it is affecting the crop yield. How? In maize and wheat. In China, it, is, it has reduced to 77%, Brazil 8%, France 3% in maize. And in wheat, China 2%, Russia 14%, France 5%. So this is coming down, the last 10 year data. Next. Also, there is the bioavailability. You may not be thinking that uh, you may be thinking that climate then doesn't have any bearing on the nutritional availability. Yes, there is uh, bearing on the nutritional ability, whether to the plant and ultimately coming to the human or the animal. So we have a penalty of different protein content, protein availability, iron availability and zinc availability. The red is the penalty. So it is decreasing and it will be decreasing gradually. Next. So Article 47 of our Indian Constitution says, what is says? It's a directive principle, who directs the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living to improve the public health. So this is the directive principle of our Indian Constitution. So we have to look at our Constitution also as a population, we have to work hard to give a healthy lifestyle to our whole citizen of India. So that's the goal. Next. So ensuring, so there is no conflict. We need food, higher amount of food with the increased population. So we'll go on increasing the yield, but also we need the nutrition simultaneously. So yield, what, what are the different uh, verticals of the yield? Yield is having plant architecture. We work, biotechnologists work on plant architecture. How we'll increase or we'll make the architecture such a way that that it will be amenable to the industrial harvesting and different ways so that uh, it will be good uh, the 
plant will be uh, showing better to the sunlight, sunlight absorption is good. So all these things we think by plant biotechnologist. Actually what happened, I uh, thought of giving a structured lecture. In the last moment I thought no. Uh, I have given in writing, I kept in writing the points, some points I will speak, but I will go according to the flow. So that's the spirit of the lecture. So reduced post-harvest losses, there are 17% or 18% post-harvest losses in India. In, China, in, in uh, USA and Japan, it is less than 4%. So whether we can work in this direction? High productivity, as I told, the productivity we have achieved, we have come a long way, but we have to increase it further. Post-harvest stress tolerance, post-harvest stress tolerance, so that should also be there. And nutrition, for the nutrition, what are the verticals? Amino acids, essential amino acids, vitamins, essential elements, immunity boosting molecules, these are the need of the hour. Next. So if you go through, I don't know whether you are able to see it or not, this is recommended nutrient intake of human health with the thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, vitamin C, A, D, calcium, iodine, iron, zinc and also many more. And iron, we are giving emphasis because it is required by, by our uh, mostly women and child. So in long term, we require to have iron as the main component and next zinc. So people are working on it, biotechnologists are working on it. Next. So this is an example, the rice. The rice production since 1951, 50, uh, 51, Green Revolution to 2020 and 21. The production has increased, the green, uh, blue line shows the production has increased. But there is a decrease in but there is a decrease in the content of zinc in rice. The production has increased, but zinc content has gone on decreasing. Next, similarly, the iron content, the iron content of rice. So we have increased rice so that we became the self uh, increased rice uh, availability. We are now self-sufficient, but iron zinc content has gone on decreasing. Here I will make a statement that is of my own. We, the plant breeder, we have seen the situation of India to remove the hunger. We have worked hard, done excellent to increase the yield. But all plant breeders, is a, a good plant breeder is a plant breeder who rejects many things, targeting only one rate which is looking at ekalabhya jaise yield yield and yield all other things we have not given much importance since time of our breeding venture has started we have gone for QTLs we are gone for reels nails uh, many things uh, goas to associate the characters with yield but we have forgotten all other characters maybe I may be wrong I may be right but the scenario is that the iron, the uh, essential amino acids, iron, protein and all other things gradually. Now we are coming up. Now we are coming up. We have done such things. Deep, we have taken a dip. Now we are again the breeders are uh, telling that high yielders will increase this component. High yielder, uh, uh, some of the rice variety or wheat variety, any other variety will increase this component. That's my point of view. Uh, we are working on this line again. Next. Desert traits for major crop. So there are two things. Again, uh, one is for industrial application. Uh, we, we, we scientists, we work for two things. One for the society, one for the industry. Industry, what they want? Industry want robustness of the product, robustness of the components they are, uh, they are receiving so that they can sustain the rigors of industrial processing. So for that reason, the protein should be robust, the sugars, what they are getting should be robust, the uh, amyloge and amyloge protein should be robust, the oil they are using should be robust, they should not be rancid very quickly, 
it should not be uh, it should not be um, it should be withstanding high temperature and pressure because um, take it or not we are moving away our society are moving away for swiggy zomato and all other processed food we may admit it or we may not admit it we are going into that direction this is a fast moving phase we are encountering we'll come back to our own food no doubt about that but right now we are going into that direction so these are high content of quality of protein high content of quality of oil high vitamin content low toxic substance anti nutritional factor for human and bio fortifications that's what we want and all of the character i am not going to read it read those next so in the in the amino acids there are indispensable and dispensable amino acids what we can synthesize within our body what we cannot synthesize our, within our body at position that when the products comes in biotechnology these products are not being accepted till now maybe in future it will be accepted if somebody is suffering from hunger he will take transgenic plant then die then die of hunger भूखा पेट को ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट खा के मरना पसंद रहेगा नहीं कि नहीं खाली भूखा खा भूखा पेट सो मरना पसंद नहीं होगा उसको सो दीज आर द अमीनो एसिड्स नेक्स्ट सो दीज आर द प्रेडिक्टेबल दीज आर द एलिमेंट्स वी नीड वी नीड इन द प्लांट सो दैट यू कैन टेक इट अप एंड वी कैन यूटिलाइज बिकॉज वाई दीज दीज मेटल्स आर नीडेड these are the coenzymes cofactors the cofactors of different processes occurring in our body so these metals in minor amount if they come inside the body then it will be vital for us we can better utilize our energy next then by fortification of iron and zinc in crops so there are different crops different crops in rice uh, in wheat rice wheat pearl millet lentin pomegranate right hand side above panel icr has developed and nrs uh, national agricultural system has developed so these are the plants with high biofortified uh, crops in the world there are 16 crops in rice having 23.99 i have given you can have the slides later on but there are different crops in rice sorghum maize and wheat then lentil pearl millet cowpea and other crops so india is no less than others so we have biofortified crops icr has released biofortified crops more than 80 or 90 biofortified crops and releasing it gradually as uh, told earlier also prime minister has released several biofortified crops in recent past next enhancement of vitamin proteins and amino acids contained in the crop so again cassava sweet potato banana maize this is pro vitamin a so we have rice transgenic rice golden rice it has not come up in india so we have other crops producing sufficient amount of the native plants the selections the varieties which are being come up in different other coming high amount of vitamin a but again the food habit i cannot force you to take cassava i cannot force myself to eat maize i cannot serve uh, because i will take rice because my food habit is different so to if i want to survive if i want to have uh, higher nutrient uh, taking a higher nutrition uh, uh, means become more awak in nutrition then i will start taking maize it may not be beneficial for me because my body is trained for rice next so genetic engineering it has enormous potential again i will vouch for that today or tomorrow we will be coming out so insect resistance biofuel protection herbicide tolerance abiotic stress tolerance nutrient due efficiency improving photosynthesis bio farming bio fortification metabolic engineering uh, there are so many characters if you see the literatures hundreds of thousands transgenic plants are available but very little has come to the market next so strategy of plant domestication enhancement of character 
so spontaneous mutation it takes thousands of years random mutations 5 to 10 years precise mutations then from the ancestral crops how the mutations are being fixed it takes that much of time to be fixed and give us a character so we select we are depending on that next so traditional crop modifications it, it is since 10000 years back it has started and genetic engineering 1970 around 40 years 39 40 years back and genome editing recent so genome editing gives us a gives us a handle to go to the mutation go for the mutation create diversity create alleles and fix that allele so that you can harvest better from that allele i cannot say that's the only future there may be many more techniques coming out in future but right now that's a handle in the hands of biotechnologist next so these are the list of crops in the database which are commercialized transgenic plants so these are around 32 plant 32 plants like apple apple argentine canola bean and what do you think the canola oil you eat this is not transgenic this is transgenic you are importing from canada you never know which is transgenic or not transgenic but in india it is not allowed to grow we are not allowed to grow the regulation prohibits us so there are um, cowpea eggplant cotton um, papaya melon so many 32 around uh, around 32 plants and these are the genes i have listed the genes and many maximum of those plants those are actually bt toxin genes bt toxin genes and few of, uh, of them like 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 uh, corn there for the uh, syrup good syrup production good sugar and amenable uh, sugar can good sugar then uh, uh, brassica napas brassica for uh, less glucosinolate so herbicide tolerance so these are the things has been uh, given to those plants as the extra character so that the plants can survive better and we are many of the plants are coming to india like soybean soybean production in india is less it is required for poultry feed and animal feed so we are importing transgenic soybean from abroad next and gm crops approved in india we know only cot cotton cotton story some of the cotton crops approved in india uh, main, uh, some of them are brought from monsanto jk agri and there uh, some of the cotton crops they are grown in india and then soybean soybean actually i was in rcgm actually soybean uh, it has been given permission to outside agency to import soybean the transgenic soybean but we are not given the license to grow in india the regulation prohibits i don't know what to do but we have to wait for that in future so we have products we have genes i know uh, uh, your agriculture university may be having a lot of genes hundred of genes they may be may be knowing it but thing is that they cannot transfer the gene if they transfer the gene they will go for the publication of a paper and with that they will be satisfied all the scientists and when it comes to the product then the product will be different the transgenic plant it will not come up and you require a um, 25 page to 30 page um, document to be filled up online and w once it is filled up online there will be many questions asked and it will go on it will go on from rcgm to gec and uh, like this next and these are the recent uh, transgenic plants which have been approved by different countries the isas uh, database next so this is a genome editing i will not teach genome editing because your teachers will teach genome editing students uh, but genome editing is a tool recently given uh, us the permission indian government has given permission to go for the uh, mutations to go for the mutation, directed mutation through CRISPR-Cas. Next. The success stories of CRISPR-Cas are many. Herbicide resistance in crops, herbicide resistance in canola, powdery mildew, soybean uh, uh, trans fat, then high yield waxy corn, non-browning mushroom, potato with altered starch, virus resistance, cucumber, 
then yield, high yield rice, gluten free wheat, uh, domestic domestication of wild tomato, low gluten, low, uh, non transgenic wheat, and development of cyanide free cassava. So these are come up. And recently, uh, next one, the GABA, GABA tomato, it is from Japan, it has been commercialized. The GABA tomato gives us good mood. So there is a single step uh, manipulation and with that they have come up with the GABA crop and this has no transgene, nothing, only a mutation. So if you take this tomato your mood will be good, uh, uh, your hormone synthesis will be good. So genome editing in vehicular iron transporter gene, that's an interesting phenomena, a recent paper. In rice, the iron where it is being stored. The, if this particular gene is there in rice, allele is there in rice, this is stored in leaf seed, this is stored in uh, uh, other places like nodes, but if there are mutations, some of the mutations that direct the iron towards the grain, how it happens, nobody knows. Mechanistically it has to be analyzed. If somebody does that, then they can say these transporters, uh, why, why I am saying that? I mean, we have to, biotechnologists, they have to work on transporters also. Transporters are very less known phenomena. So how they are transporting? They are transporting from the root, they are taking up in the uh, vascular tissues, then going to the grain and de actually depositing in the grain, the part which we eat. So that part should be nutritious. nutritious. If the root is nutritious, I don't eat root, then uh, it is no uh, meaning of that. Next. So tar I have done, a, done one analysis, Indian analysis. What are the different gene targets which are being worked upon by Indian people? So this is the list. If you can go to the last one, the targets was being identified by which country? Not India. The last column you can see. I have not found India. Next. No India. Next. No India. Okay. We are working on targets which are not of our own and 50% of those targets are IPR protected. So when you go and develop the crop, then you go to the person to get a license. So what should you do? I think NARS system, we should have a consortium of uh, consortium so that we can have a library of genes identified by ourselves, proven by ourselves and IPR protected. That is the need of the hour. World is moving very fast. We can say that we are working for the society, but that doesn't help. If I get a genome edited crop for the society, can uh, Donda, uh, who is the inventor, uh, they can give a license free? No. They will, they will ask some money. So in future, in future, that will be the scenario. So we should be very careful when working on a target, whether this target is publicly available. Why should I, why should I work on a target which is already known, published, not novel? As a scientist, I should work on a uh, target which I should prove myself, mechanistically analyze, functionally characterize and protected myself. So if one, each and every biotechnologist work on one uh, target each, see how many targets will come up. So in the agricultural situation, agricultural system, if we work all as a consortium, come together, then uh, not money is not required much. You are working, you will be working. Let us have a discussion on which targets will work so that it will give us more food in different food crop, also the nutritionally rich food. So as I told, we are implementing agency, we have to work, the next generation has to work. 
so we have to work on this direction to develop our own targets not work on the other targets so we can find out other targets and work on that year after year and we are go on publishing paper uh, some impact factor 2 and 3 and get promotion and sometimes get, we get clapping that we have doing good in our own system so we clap uh, we pat our own back so for the country we need our own targets next so this is one of the c4 project uh, which is being carried out in a consortium funded by G Melinda Gates, G Gates Foundation. So they want to convert rice to the C4 plants so that carbon dioxide utilization will be much more. So how uh, all the people, they, they, they want to try to uh, means reshuffle, rekindle the complete photosynthetic system. Of course, there is a limited success, success but it is not impossible. It can be done in future. One day we will learn that rice became C4 plants. So these are the disruptive innovation people are thinking and uh, they are working for that. India is not a part of that right now. Maybe in future it will be a part. Next. So can we afford to ignore technological advances in agriculture? Not now. We cannot ignore the technological advances. Next. So when it was being uh, by horses, then there was, uh, uh, when tractor came, so there was inhibition. But now tractor is the uh, center stage. Next. So all these organizations, nearly every major scientific organization has concluded GM is safe. Still then, the biotechnologist, the main attraction of the funding is not having many products. Because of transgenic plants is not allowed it. So it has to be in future allowed it to uh, uh, have a greater bearing in the product delivery of the biotechnologist. Only going for the, I have seen a wonderful setup today, wonderful setup for uh, dead pump in uh, uh, AU. Beautiful, people are working in an industrial scale. So some of the plant, transgenic plants, if they are being allowed with better Climate resilience, again, I don't take climate resilience as the simply stress tolerance. Stress tolerance is a stress occurring sometimes, for some time. But in climate resilience, this stress is occurring again and again and we don't know when it will occur. So the genes should be amenable such a way that they will be interacting in a different manner and giving us tolerance to the stress, res tolerance to the stress. So another aspect, I will come to that. So this is about uh, the transgenic plant. Next. So genetic enhanced for yield and nutrition. Example is from rice again. Next. So if you compare brown rice, wheat, maize, potato, you see rice is very low uh, in uh, the uh, content of different uh, uh, minerals and uh, amino acids. Next. So what we should do? Intervention of amino acid and protein level. Enhancement of lysine content, enhancement of threonine content, tryptophan content, cysteine content. I have listed down some of the characters which we should do in rice. And we are, some of us, of, of us are working on it. And also I can have, uh, uh, we can have collaborations. Uh, I was talking today, chickpea, I want chickpea uh, to produce, uh, instead of leguminous and uh, leguminous protein in the seed, I want it to produce more leg hemoglobin and more amount of uh, uh, some of the amino acids we, which actually gives a smell like meat. So uh, we are working on that. So in this direction, uh, uh, as uh, someone was telling that meat protein and uh, plant producing meat type of protein. So can we have this type of thinking in future? Having more amino acids, more uh, proteins and different type of proteins, having a different type of taste which will be palatable. Next. And last, last uh, point I have written, uh, modifying transporters. Transporters is a very important aspect of that. And genetic engineering interventions, lots of literatures, I am not going to detail, just have, no need to have tension by seeing this slide, not, I am not able to see it. I am telling you, uh, don't see it. I am telling you that uh, genetic engineering intervention, lots of literatures are there in rice. But not a single plant has come up to the field. Next. 
uh, for different characters. QTLs. There are lots of QTLs analyzed. But very few QTLs are being analyzed mechanistically. We are introducing these QTLs to one after identifying this will increase the yield, this will be tolerance to uh, stress, this will be tolerance to saline stress, this will be tolerance to uh, high water content, soft gene also identified from that. Very few genes are being identified from these QTLs. Oh, it is high time. A again, the sub one genes, this is from an Indian cultivar, taken abroad, worked upon by other people, they have gone for that and they have IPR for that and we people are come working on sub-1. So sub-1 is a transcription factor again. The transcription factor and there may be many more transcription factor influencing this transcription factor. Why don't we work on that? If we analyze the QTLs, in the QTLs there will be many more genes, not a single gene. We classify them into minor QTL, major QTL, micro QTL, also so, so many names we give. What major QTLs does? 75% increase. Minor QTLs, 5% increase. 2% increase. So I consider all the QTLs having different type of genes which are being influenced by different transcription factor which we identified through breeding, crossing overs and all these things. Once we identify it, that's not the end of the story. We should go for the genes and which genes contributes how much and how they are related. We have to decipher the complete pathway. Then only our Indian science and agriculture will move forward. Otherwise, we have to depend on another, a very big system, NAR system, collaborating with some other institute abroad and giving higher importance to them. So I see the future in other direction. NARS is the biggest system Indian agriculture and it will be helping in a bigger way and we have taken initiative in this direction to create a repository of genes and targets. We have taken pain to identify all the genes from the QTL. So we have made a, a group in our institute. So anybody can come and join us. Next. So genome editing rice. Uh, many trades are being edited. Uh, again product, product, we want product. So there are many genes are being edited, products very few. Next, carotenoid and flavonoids in rice, vitamin A content. So carotenoids, flavonoids, then I am gradually coming to a different subject. Different subject means we want food to be our medicine. Nutrition, it is okay. We want food to be our medicine. What we have done again, the same statement, through breeding, we have forgotten the smell of rice. We only run after basmati rice. What about the other land races which gives us better smell, better taste? We have forgotten about that. So those molecules which are actually immunogenic in nature, we have forgotten about them. Whether rice plant contain that, I have one analysis, I will show you. So flavonoids and uh, carotenoids, people they have gone for genome editing in those plants and we know we have uh, rice, uh, vitamin A rice which are already being uh, produced. Next. Pathway synteny for important mo molecules in rice. Again, to my scientist when I go and discuss, I tell that there is a synteny. The pathways which we call medicinal plants. Why, why, why we call medicinal plants? Once uh, Rishi Atreya, if I am bored then raise your hand and sleep. Uh, if you have not bored, then uh, listen. Once uh, Rishi Atreya sent four of his decide to four different uh, uh, direction. Tell them bring the plant which is medicinal. Uh, bring not uh, uh, which, which is actually medicinal. All of them went in four direction. One of a person, one of the, the disciple, he came back without anything. Then he scolded him, why you didn't bring anything? There are so many plants medicinal. He told that there is no plant which is not medicinal. Even if rice is medicinal, but now rice is not medicinal, what we are eating? We are polishing it. The alveolar grain is gone. The outer coating is gone. We are isolating bran oil. So everything is gone. So whether, and, but the pathways 
of medicinal plant, I tell you, the pathway of medicinal plants are existing in rice. We call that medicinal because they are producing in a dominant way those molecules in higher amount. But very small, what our body wants? Our body wants very minor amount. So those pathways are defective. Can we correct them through genome editing? So these are the pathways. Diterpenoid pathway, indoral colored biosynthesis pathway, flavonoid biosynthesis pathway, geranial degradation pathway. Why? Why? Our residual living uh, means uh, uh, they were immortal, they were living 2000 years, 3000 years. Uh, it is not like that. So, my time is over. So, these are the geranial degradation, geranial pathway is there. Next. Then flavon and flavonoid biosynthesis, these are required for antioxidants, if uh, antioxidant required in our body. Then limonene, pinene degradation, phenylalanine metabolism, isoquinolyl alkaloid. Sir, there are some alkaloid required, there are some phenyl propanoid required, there are some terpenoid required for our body. But these genes are defective in rice and in many food crops. So we are not getting those things in our body now. Earlier people, they are getting everything, they are getting, uh, though productivity was less, they are getting many things DC. So they were living long. Next. So these are uh, the sesquiterpenoid, then terpenoid, Brackman biosynthesis, steroid biosynthesis, little bit steroid is also required for the body. Next. Uh, there are different pathways, vitamin B6 metabolism. Next. So uh, mind you, I have analyzed all these pathways in rice. Those exist, but the genes are defective. Can we modify those genes according to our requirement? It will be a daunting task. We have to either go back to the wild germ population, wild population, or we have to take a higher, product, higher producing uh, line or variety, some of the variety, and go for genome editing one after another. So that's the only way if you go future, uh, into the future. So we have to do that. We have to do that to provide nutritional security to our citizen. Next. Again, what is NIPB? So this, uh, about this nutritional security, I should stop here, but I'll talk about my institute a little bit. This has been actually um, founded by Professor Bhiyal Chopra. Uh, it is difficult for me to fit in that zoo, but uh, I am trying to lead that institute. It is a great institute and uh, the mustard hybrids, uh, the mustard Pusa Jaikishan, it occupies the third largest area which has developed by um, uh, B.L. Chopra. Then we have several mustard hybrid, B.T. Brinjal, Pusa Basmati one by Professor Mahapatra and rice, tomato, pigeon pea, we have 12 genome sequenced then developed in rice, uh, gene chips developed for different uh, rice, pigeon pea, mango, for uh, uh, single nucleotide polymer pigeon uh, genotyping, uh, then mapping of QTLs, there are several QTLs, and also go for HRD. Uh, we have IRI, uh, under IRI we give MSc and PhD degree, we take PhD students and MSc students. Next. So these are the genomes which are being sequenced by uh, NIPB, now my emphasis is to utilization of the genome. So finding out what is defective in different varieties and correct them. Correct them for future ready nutrient rich genotypes variety. Next. So these are the varieties in collaboration with different institutes NIPB has developed. Next. Uh, this is one BT transgenic which is in the last stage of the trial. Now we have got permission from the Delhi government. GESE has given permission. So we will go for the trial. But whether it will be released or not, I don't know. So again, there is a steps. Dr. Pental is struggling for his Barnage and Barnstar uh, mustard. So we don't know whether it, who, in which direction it will go. But we are in the stage going for the trial. Next. Next, please. I was telling. The plant has the immunity by itself. Uh, actually, if you see uh, the plants, I'll have slides in future, uh, further two, three slides. So, 
देर इज एन इंड्यूसिबल प्रोटेक्ट ऑफ फार्मेसल सिंथेज कन्फर टॉलरेंस अगेन्स्ट बैक्टीरियल पाथोजेन मीन्स प्लांट हाज इट्स ओन इम्यूनिटी इफ यू इंड्यूस फार्मेसल सिंथेज इट प्रोड्यूस मोर फार्मेसल सो इट हेज लेट ब्लाइट टॉलरेंस इन पोटेटो सो इफ आई गो फॉर द सेकेंडरी मेटाबोलाइट्स लिटिल बीट इनक्रीज इट सो द फंगस विल बी रिपेल्ड लाइकली लाइक दिस द नेक्स्ट वन दिस इज आवर पब्लिकेशन ओनली दिस इज वन इज प्लांट जर्नल आई एम नॉट गिविंग मोर पब्लिकेशन देन डेसीफेरिंग द पोर्ड बर हेलिकोफर पार मिजेंस यू नो प्लाटिकर्पस काजनस प्लाटिकर्पस इज द वर्ल्ड टाइप द हेलिकोफर पा डजेंट इट देयर वाई because there are some secondary metabolites like epicatechin catechin if they are higher in the plant this particular pathway is there in the chickpea in the pigeon pea cultivated pigeon pea but this is defective so can we modify the cultivated pigeon pea for this genes so let us see what happens so some of the secondary metabolite usko jagayenge actually plant ka immunity hai lekin hum usko kharab kar chuke hain wild type plant ka hai कीड़ा क्यों नहीं खाता है हमारे जो कल्टीवेटर प्लांट में कीड़ा क्यों खाते हैं मैं वो जस्टिफाई कर रहा हूँ मेरे स्टेटमेंट को जो मेरा परसेप्शन है मैं गलत हूँ या सही हूँ जो ब्रीडिंग के, के लिए मैंने दिया था वी हैव गन और ब्रीडिंग एंड रिमूव मेनी थिंग्स वी हैव टारगेटेड ओनली हाई इल्ड हाई इल्ड हाई इल्ड टू फीड द पॉपुलेशन दिस इज नॉट बैड ऑल्सो दैट इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट फर्स्ट यू हैव टू फीड द पॉपुलेशन देन वी हैव टू थिंक अदर नेक्स्ट सर वी हैव द इम्यून सिस्टम but plant next plant is standing outside any plant crop plant also that uh, uh, don't have the immune systems like us we have a igg ig igm uh, different type of uh, when some antigen comes inside the antibody will go and uh, bind it then different t cells uh, you know covid covid scenario you must have learned how our antibody antigen reaction occur plants has uh, these are the compounds in their armory so these are the compounds with the armory and with which they fight they stand there they fight against everything i am not telling these are the uh, these are the only things they have for fighting everything but these are some of the things which they have and i am not talking this thing without any base i have analyzed many qtls in different plants and i find many secondary metabolite genes in those qtls biosynthetic genes so it is not that a specific insect uh, you can you can drive out all the insect by a specific metabolite so a insect will love one plant and dislike another plant the same plant will be susceptible to that insect in one environment it will not be susceptible to in another environment this is true why the same genetic makeup is there everything is same the same plant it is happening the plant growing in chennai is the same plant the plant growing here that may be affected by aphids but it may not be affected by aphids why the genes are there every gene is expressing secondary metabolites play important role it dislikes it dislikes the secondary metabolite which produce here which doesn't produce there it is not there so they comes and like it and eat it next so ek simap ka example mein jab simap mein tha ek tiddiya aaye the jo locust aaye the bahut wahan bhi gaye the yahan se to aaye the wahan bhi gaye the wahan gaye the wo dekhenge medicinal aromatic plant bahut badhiya se grow kar rahe hain next next सारे जो क्रप प्लांट था हम जो लगाए थे गेहूं वगैरह कुछ लगाया गया था सब खा लिए लेकिन मेडिसिनल प्लांट आर्टिमिशिया लेमन ग्राइस सब खड़े हैं उनके पास आए ही नहीं खाए होंगे भागे होंगे सो व्हाट डज इट मीन प्लांट सेकेंडरी मेटाबोलाइट्स प्लेज अन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल इन प्लांट इम्यूनिटी इट प्लेज अन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल इन प्लांट इम्यूनिटी इट प्लेज इम्पोर्टेंट रोल इन आवर इम्यूनिटी ऑल्सो वी लर्न फ्रॉम द प्लांट्स इसीलिए तो आयुर्वेदा है we learn from the plants next so these are the tulsi genotype i was talking that tulsi has been sequenced these are the variety we developed now it is growing in farmers field 
So one of the variety we sequence next. I'll go quickly. Uh, uh, these are the biosynthetic pathway, different high value molecules which are produced by Tulsi and also immunogenic, Im which immunogenic in nature, which provide immunity to human being. Those we have analyzed, the transcriptome genomes, next. Uh, this is a transcriptome and genome paper, next. Uh, again, I will give another example of Asogandha. Asogandha is a plant, uh, we have several publication in that. What we have done there, how different molecules, uh, uh, this is one in new phytologist or something, plant biotechnology, uh, there are some papers in that. Next, what we told that campesterol and stigma sterols, they are uh, actually the pathway leading to the withanoloid biosynthesis. So we went for RNAi, we went for stopping uh, the different pathway, MEP pathway and DXR pathway, little bit science. So, so not going, okay, it's okay. We have MEP pathway and uh, DXR pathway which controls the uh, terpene biosynthesis actually. So uh, this is the triterpene with analyte and this is a high value molecules also. This produce immunity uh, also to uh, during the time of corona, you might have eaten Tinospora, Vidanya and all this thing, mixture of all those things, having tea, Tulsi together, giving us a kada. So these are high value molecules. Next. Again, some of the genes of the biochemical pathways, squalene synthase, uh, uh, we have analyzed, gone for the uh, weeks, virus mediated gene expression, and stopped that gene and found out how the metabolites are distributed in different, uh, uh, um, different pathway, different uh, uh, compounds. Next, I'll go quickly. This is one of the important thing related to uh, ammoniacal fertilizer. If you give ammoniacal fertilizer to Vidania, Vidania biosynthesis increases, not other nitrogens, nitrate fertilizer. So what it does, it actually increases the one of the transcription factor, uh, work E1. This work E1 is a regulator of the Vidania biosynthesis pathway. Also it increases the jasmonate. So for that reason, together they increase the metabolite biosynthesis. Next, again the uh, similar thing, the different genes in the uh, egg gene, अच्छा से mechanistically analyze करके अच्छा publication कर दो, वो ही किया था, दूसरा कुछ है नहीं, ultimately वो जो है कि नहीं, वो इतना लाइट कैसे ज़्यादा बढ़ाएंगे, next, this is again PCP, plant cell and physiology, so we have gone for some other genes, uh, gone for over expression as well as um, down regulation, RNAi. So how withanolate biosynthesis will be increased, gone for the transgenic plant of withania, but withania transgenic plant will never come out uh, to the field. Next. So we have genomic resources. I told about the osimum genome. Next. So these are different aromatic plants. I am actually, I have done my postdoc in aroma genomics. For the reason I am talking a little bit about that. So in aroma, um, we require aroma. Aromatic molecules are also medicinal. Many medi uh, those are being used for uh, different uh, purposes, medicinal purposes. So we have the transcriptome and genome of many aroma molecules. Next, which are medicinal also. So these are the genes we have cloned. So I talked about the repository of genes. I have created in medicinal plant. Aromatic plant. Now we will be creating in uh, our own target Indian germplasm, Indian uh, IPR protected uh, uh, targets. So that it will be easier for us in the next generation to uh, manipulate for food, high, uh, high food security or nutritional security in future. Next. This is sesquiterpene biosynthesis gene and if you see this particular Veridi floral, this is 10 milligram, about 300 dollar. So we have transgenic plant where mentha was producing earlier, earlier 0.5 percent, now it produced 25 percent. So this is ext oil can be extracted and can be fractionated. What it does, Veridi floral, it increases the lactation of milk in animal. This is just a smell. This is just an aroma, beautiful aroma, but it increases the lactation. So for that reason the value is too high, so we have cloned it and it will be going for in future. So uh, in conclusion, uh, next, I will say uh, 
I'll not uh, stretch it to more time. Uh, some of you, are, I'm seeing you are again with the mobile phone. Uh, I'll leave you here, but I'll definitely I'll tell my conclusion what I think. Uh, we have to have our own targets, genes which are mechanistically analyzed, published, and IPR protected, a repository one, Indian genes, from Indian journalism. Second thing, we have to go for the targets in high yielding genotype for nutritional security by, by intervening in the transporters, intervening for vitamins, amino acids and all other immunity chemicals wherever we want. The third thing we have to today or tomorrow we will be realizing that genetic engineering is important and we have to produce transgenic plant. Now we are going for functional analysis in transgenic plant. We will be have products, a large number of transgenic plants in future. So the myth will go and maybe 10 year, 20 year. We have to wait for that. Again, the genome editing has come, but we have lost 39 years for transgenic plants because we have not involved social scientists with it. Because it is needed that to create the perception, uh, narrative, that genome editing plants are good, we are not able to create uh, the uh, narrative of for the transgenic plant, Bandana Siva created. She created transgenic plants are not good at that point of time. And that initial phase is important. Whatever perception you give to the public, because they don't know the intervention, what type of intervention is going on, what is the importance, what is the positive side, what is the negative side, so they will fly according to that uh, perception. Just like uh, I told Modi wave. Modi wave taken the, it is in a good way, uh, good wave. But now if you create the uh, genome editing wave, with the involvement of social scientists and create the narr narrative that we can improve the food security as well as nutritional security of India in future in a better way, then it will be very good. And so we require the help of all, biotechnologists require the help of not only breeding, but also all the branch of science like social sciences. Thank you very much for inviting me here. And I am very much grateful to you. Jai Bharat. Jai Hind. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you very much, sir. Some speech, it was informative and precise. It is necessary for us, the researchers, to know the challenges, loopholes, and white spaces in any research area, which you have explained nicely, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, as it can be presumed that uh, there are some queries from the audience. So, sir, with your permission, we can go for the interaction. Uh, this has been given, this is uh, done by Japanese. Uh, that's a GABA, uh, it's a um, uh, beautiful molecule which actually stimulates the brain for better mood. So a single gene is required. So if you mutate that gene, then there will be more production of GABA. So that has been done by Japanese. You can do it here. You can do it here. Uh, very simple step, genome editing. If you are a student of biotechnology, you might have studied genome editing from your uh, teachers. They can tell you there are uh, several vectors available. So you can do it. Very easy. Now genome editing is very easy. Okay. 
थैंक यू मेटाबोलाइट एनालिसन आई लेफ देर रिक्वेड रिक्वेड फॉर दिस इज हाईली because it is used in a, uh, in all the preparations curry leaves uh, all over india so highly beneficial molecules are there so definitely high uh, more work is required more work is required i am kc dalal uh, i don't take any medicine since last about 10 years or so i am 85 5 year old whatever whatever we listened here probably most of these things can be done by multinational companies better than the government companies or and welfare for welfare you need to have non communicable diseases should be controlled non communicable diseases are increasing throughout the world as dr jala mentioned so for that what is required is to find out what our ancestors were taking food not now but 10000 years ago 10000 years is a very small period to have any mutations any changes so if you try to follow what our ancestors were taking probably you may remain disease free for a longer period this is in short i have to say specifically You should take saturated fat, not raw form. You can take. You have to protect your liver and feed your gut. That's overall. If you want to remain healthy, he mentioned about mucous membrane. That also will remain good if you protect your liver and feed your gut. Because if you feed your gut, the gut bacteria will not uh, spoil your mucous membrane. thank you sir you mentioned about uh, uh, many limitations in transgenics and even uh, there are some hurdles uh, in gene editing also coming to the conventional breeding methods uh, and one thing which you mentioned see sir i have uh, we know that india is uh, has very rich biodiversity in each all all, all the crops and when we uh, when you mentioned about target uh, genes uh, i think there are uh, uh, many crops which we have not exploited you mentioned about qtls also and that is the how uh, that is the way the coat qtls can if they are identified we can go for like uh, pyramiding or stacking Q, of qtls where the uh, icr can play a very important role and i uh, also feel about other than rice and wheat we have uh, not more, more, i mean even in uh, pulses also soya bean and all that we have not done much work on pgnp even my millets like uh, pearl millet or uh, finger millets uh, and there are many other even sorghum also we have, uh, these are this can be a very good uh, uh, sources for uh, uh, genetic resources for targets so uh, uh, particularly identifying the qtls in these uh, crops and uh, helping breeders to uh, target i mean uh, pyramiding or staking of these qtls through uh, conventional molecular markers can icr can help as a use in that respect uh, agreed so completely agreed with you actually oh, we are having a program to develop markers also to help the breeders 
uh, what type of markers, whether it will be SNP marker or what type of marker, we have to decide and have a cheap type of thing. Whether the gene has been transferred to the back, uh, to the specific background, we have chip for background check, we have the ch chip for transferring the trades, uh, also you can make a chip to which are the genes are being transferred. So these are absolutely required to uh, help the breeders and we will be working in this direction also to development of markers. Again you told that the, um, there are lots of germplasm which are being unexplored, true. So there is a reservoir of targets, reservoir of uh, genes, so those should be explored in a better way. We are talking about that, but very few people is doing that. Some of the collections are there in NIPB for wild rice germplasm by Dr. N.K. Singh, you might have listened about that. So, uh, like this, for different crops, we have collections. N uh, NBPGR is having all the germplasm collection, but those are not being properly analyzed in a systematic way. So, if we can go for some of the genes which are beneficial, again I told, where from we will find out the gene? From the wild resources. From the wild resources. Because we cannot uh, find out those in the cultivated resources. It may, might have gone defective. Once there is a positive and negative, then only we can have something going on in our brain. Without a positive and a negative, only negative, we will not find out anything. Only positive will not find out anything. So we have to have contrasting genotype to find out the things. So we'll get from wild resources. Thank you, sir. That's uh, very well said. Sir, sir, I have a few questions. Uh, I am from uh, veterinary field, uh, most related to poultry and animal field. I have a question regarding this GM corn and GM soya. Uh, recently, government has uh, oil we are importing. G and D oil cake we are importing. What is what is the future? Does government is allow for GM corn and GM soya? Because this is growing at three percent average, and poultry or animal feed industry is growing at three uh, ten percent. So there is huge gap. In future will be gap. So any 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 chance is there for this this uh, product is too for animal feed industry particularly. For animal feed industry, poultry feed industry, GM corn and GM soya is allowed or there is a future. Is there any chances? Yes, uh, this thing uh, because there is a shortage of uh, why far they are importing. Uh, you should think about that. Why far they are importing? Poultry feed require DL methionine in higher amount. They also require lysine arginine in higher amount. Whether the Indian corn variety they are having those nutrient in high amount the egg production will be high, the meat production will be high if such type of nutrients are there in those plants. Those plants are tra made transgenic for these purposes, for animal feed and uh, here in India, those type corn of corn. genotypes or feeds are not available. Corn we are not importing at GM, sir. We are importing non-GM corn from Ukraine only, sir. From? Mm non-GM corn from Ukraine. No, uh, uh, non-GM corn no, we are bringing, GM not importing yeah. right now. But for soya, soya we import. are importing. Not seeds here, de oil cake. De oil what cake. is the future? Yes. Because, because one, one, on the one say, we feed, have a bioethanol fuel production. Recently, in the last, uh, last month, Correct. we have a biofuel production. Mostly in US, uh, biofuel production from the GM corn. And there is a competition between food and this bioethanol production. So that's why, in, in respect to that, uh, last announcement, I am, I am, I am, I am convincing uh, people like you can convince the government that uh, if we need a bioethanol from the corn, it must be a GM corn. It, it, it must agreed. be our food Ag corn. Agreed, Dr. Sub, agreed. Uh, I showed you one slide where uh, we are having Bt toxin, all this uh, uh, cotton is approved in India to cultivate. But other things which I show, uh, showed in soybean, those are imported for feed oil cakes. Those permission I was in RCGM, those things came. Uh, corn uh, not allowed till now, neither for the transgenic plant nor for importing. Maybe in future it will be required. I talked to some of the industry. One of my friend is the CEO of one of the big farm, poultry farm. He wanted, and also, you know, um, uh, who is the anim uh, animal uh, husbandry minister? 
Balan, Sanjay Balan. Sir, you? I can add to what you said. See, even some, some years back, when we had HPQ maize hybrids available, they, those hybrids can, I mean, that, that material can be used as a poultry feed and it can definitely uh, enhance the nutritional quality of uh, eggs. That I was uh, coming to that. Actually, uh, we are in Hyderabad, the CEO came. I was along with Dr. A.K. Singh, uh, IRA director. He has some of the hybrid of high amino acid content. Those specific amino acid content required for lactation, those specific amino acid content which are being the standardized by the in Indian industry, that those, if they put that material in those field, so this is the standard, ISO standard, so those type of things are not available for them in India. The personal discussion says, they say that. So they have given up some criteria. These are the criteria and content on which we should do research to feed the feed of uh, corn and all other things, hybrid crowns, if you produce. So this must be the content so that we can accept it. So there is some industrial requirement also. Otherwise you can, there are so many corn variety. Sir, second for human nutrition, uh, we have grains, mostly phytate varieties. Do we have a, a low phytate variety grains that can uh, reduce the this zinc and average deficiency is there? Low phytate, vari low phytate varieties of grain can be possible to uh, to popularize low phytate variety grain. Maybe. So why so not we are doing, sir? Huh? Why not we are doing, sir? I cannot answer that, but uh, maybe. Like low glucosinolate mustard, double mustard. zero. But double zero, single zero is there. Hmm. Canola have that, they have very huge market of canola, but we are not able but, to popularize. But uh, doctor, it. another thing, when you are reducing the glucosinolate, then there is increase in aphid attack. But you know for, for my put, my feed industry, I need low, low uricic acid varieties, sir. Uh, okay, but I have an animal testing right now. Uh, a paper will come out. Double zero, single zero, and normal one. Uh, <laughs> normal one, which thank is having both the you. things. Thank you. And and uh, listen, uh, don't go. There is no difference in the animal toxicity. Let me tell you, this is a craze. Poultry, sir. Monogastric animals we can't fit. In, in, in animal models. Uh, poultry, sir. Mostly poultry need uh, this all oil seed cakes. Boiled egg. Oil seed cakes. We have a double zero, but we have not yet popularized. Not, low, not popularized, low uricic acid. So two, three questions I have in mind related to this GM. I'm not getting him actually. Okay, it's okay. Sir, I, I have a very basic question about uh, genome editing. You told that number of crop varieties they have been developed through genome editing, of course outside, not in India. Uh, uh, but uh, those technologies, they are already patented. So you need to have license for them, if you want to use them. Now, CRISPR-Cas technology as such requires license or not? Uh, uh, genome editing through CRISPR-Cas. CRISPR this is patented. It is, it is patented. So for that also you need to have a license. No? That's a technology we have to get from uh, uh, the Donda and all other people. Uh, the, those are having the patent in their name. Okay. Right. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. Uh, my question is that India has so many population hai, sir, and many people who are suffering from malnutrition. Se, matlab, suffer karte so why India is not per permitting golden rice matlab, eating? Ke liye? Sari developed countries have given that they include golden rice ko wo log food. Mein include karte hai, India why not India? Sir, sir okay, it should be implemented, but uh, regulatory, regulatory approval should be there. This is a transgenic rice. There are uh, three or four genes, four genes are being transferred. So, uh, actually we should get permission from GESC, final permission. Sir, this is that biotechnology, whatever we implement, like 
नए जीन्स जो डालेंगे प्लांट्स के अंदर फूड को तो अल्टीमेटली इतने ही टाइम लगेगा इंडिया में इंप्लीमेंट होने के लिए कि गोल्डन राइस तो कब का बन गया है फिर भी इंडिया में आने में इतना टाइम लग गया तो अभी बन रहा है तो इंप्लीमेंट होने में दो हजार तक तो, तो हम कैसे मतलब पूरा कर सकेंगे इतना जगह देर हो रही है गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से हमारे लिए तो फिर अगर प्रीडर कर भी रहा है तो उसका मतलब फायदा क्या है कि जब हम अपने गोल्स को अचीव नहीं कर सकते टाइम के अंदर तो करेक्ट आप जो बोल रहे हैं सही है लेकिन रेगुलेशन हमारे हाथ में थोड़ी ना है ओके सर थैंक यू सर आई सपोज वी आर डोंट हैव एनी अदर क्वेरीज फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर ऑफरिंग योर सेंसियर एफर्ट्स इन एड्रेसिंग द क्वेरीज Uh, I request Dr. A. M. Sheikh, former Vice Chancellor, Anand Agriculture University, to honour Dr. A. K. Sashani, today's speaker, with a memento. Please, sir. I now request Dr. Ghansham B. Patil, Assistant Research Scientist, Plant Tissue Culture Laboratory, Department of Agriculture Biotechnology, to offer the vote of thanks. Please. Good morning to all. It is my great pleasure to offer the vote of thanks at the fag end of 14th uh, uh, Memorial Lecture in the memory of Dr. D. R. Patel, which is being arranged by our uh, own BSc Alumni Association. First of all, I will thank our uh, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. K. B. Khatiriya, sir, for blessing the event in spite of very busy schedule. Uh, sir is always keen to see this lecture as very informative and uh, very useful to all the faculty as well as students. Uh, I thank our uh, Director of Research, Dr. M. K. Jala, uh, being guest of honor, who also uh, given us the excellent facts and figure and providing the very good background for this particular lecture. The lecture is a, a great success with an excellent and illuminating presentation by Dr. A.K. Shashani, sir, director of our prestigious uh, ICR NIPB New Delhi. Sir is very considerative and very factual in his presentation. And uh, he has uh, given very good background and uh, even all the uh, people who are not from biotechnology background also could have got many things from this particular lecture. So, sir, we are really thankful for accepting our uh, uh, request. I am thankful to Dr. Vayam Shukla, sir, uh, Dean of uh, um, BACA College and uh, President of our association. Uh, I am uh, really thankful to Dr. K.C. Patel, sir, Secretary of this particular uh, uh, BAC Alumni Association and uh, uh, to whose uh, keen interest this lecture right from the conceptualization to the realization he is always uh, involved in each and every step and uh, due to uh, his uh, involvement this lecture uh, is a very good uh, success here i am grateful to our uh, distinguished alumni dr am sheikh dr dalal sir balala sir uh, ed patel sir rc jala sir and uh, all other the uh, faculty uh, deans and directors of various uh, our colleges and institutes and uh, the faculty member from uh, our university as well as from A.N. Patel also and uh, the students from both the like uh, from A.N. Patel College of uh, Biotechnology and uh, from our university uh, for uh, coming and attending this lecture and without the, their involvement this lecture could not have been possible. And the last I will thank all the members of uh, various committee and uh, various uh, uh, persons in all in this particular lecture. Uh, who has directly or in indirectly contributed to make this lecture a very good success uh, on and uh, in and all. I am thankful to all. Thank you.